In this problem, we have y, a continuous random variable, and we have the density function, little f of y. It's given by this piecewise function. And the question is to find the distribution function, um, capital F. So note that the definition of the distribution function is super important. So big F of little y, by definition, is equal to the integral from negative infinity to y of f of t dt. So all we have to do is work this out and then we're done. So we have to be really, really careful and to think about it very carefully uh, when we go through the steps. So let's just look at um, all of the possibilities. So little f of y is going to be equal to 3y squared if y is between 0 and 1. And otherwise, it's going to be 0. So let's first look at the case when y is less than 0. That's the natural thing to do. So for y less than 0, we have big f of y is equal to the improper integral from negative infinity to y of f of t dt. And if you're wondering why I decided to look at this case first, the y less than 0 case, well, the, my thinking is that um, we're going to look first uh, for y less than 0. Then we're going to look uh, for y between these numbers here, between 0 and 1. And then we'll look for y bigger than 1. And then uh, we should be able to come up with an answer. OK, so y here is less than 0. So when y is a number less than 0, little f of y is equal to 0, right? Because it says elsewhere it's equal to 0. So this is equal to the improper integral from negative infinity to y. And so because y is less than 0, we fall into this second category. So we simply replace f of t with 0. So we get 0 dt. I'm actually going to go through and explain this calculation. The answer here is 0, but here's why. When you integrate this, um, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to replace the negative infinity with a variable. So I'll use b. And then you let b approach negative infinity. And then we still have b, y, and then we have our 0 dt. And again, showing extra steps. These are often uh, omitted in, in textbooks and things like that. When you integrate 0, you get a constant. So this is equal to the limit as b approaches negative infinity. And then we have a constant here, so capital C. And we're going from b to y. So if you're wondering why it's a constant, just remember when you integrate, you're doing the opposite of differentiation. So uh, when you take the derivative of c, you, you do get 0. And the rule of integration says that, uh, well, the fundamental theorem of calculus says <laughs> that you plug in the top one first. So we still have the limit sign. When you plug in y into c, there's nothing there. So you just get c. Then you subtract, and then you plug in b, there's nothing there, so you just get c. So this is equal to the limit. It's a painful amount of detail as b approaches negative infinity, but it's good. Of 0, which is just equal to 0. So we have our first answer. So for y less than 0, it, the answer is going to be 0. Okay. So now we're going to look at the case uh, when y is between 0 and 1. Let's go ahead and do that down here. So for y between 0 and 1, okay, now we're looking at this case here. Same definition, right? Big F of y is equal to um, the improper integral from negative infinity to y of f of t dt. And so now we have to think a little bit harder. So we're going from um, 0 to y. And y is a number um, between 0 and 1. So we do have to uh, consider everything here. So it's from negative infinity to y. And the biggest y can be is 1. So what we'll do is we'll break it up. We'll first go from negative infinity to 0. OK. And then we'll go from 0 to y, where y is a number less than or equal to 1. Really, really delicate. And if you're wondering, why do we break it up? 
It's because we are integrating from negative infinity to y. Okay, so you have to think about what y is. y is a number between 0 and 1, so the biggest it can be is 1. So we'll go from negative infinity to 0, and then from 0 to y, where y is a number uh, between 0 and 1. The good news is uh, we know uh, what this integral here is, right? This piece here is going to be uh, 0, okay? It's the same reason uh, that this one was 0 over here. You see here we had the y, and really nothing happened with the y. It could have been any number. So here, same thing, this is going to be 0, so it'll be 0 plus. Now this integral here uh, is going to transform into something else. We know that y is a number between 0 and 1, and we're integrating from 0 to 1. So we're looking at this case here. So we're going to replace our f of t with um, 3t squared. Okay, So it's 3t squared dt, and we're going to y. Be saying, why is it t? Isn't it supposed to be y? No, um, we're using a different variable here, right? This is a dummy variable. It's the variable of integration. So you can't have y in both the limit of integration and the integrand. So it's really important uh, to be correct and professional and do it right. So this is equal to, so now we're going to use the power rule here to integrate. So we'll add 1 and divide. So we'll get 3t cubed over 3, which will just be t cubed, right? Because the 3s cancel. And then we're going from 0 to y. You plug in the y first, so you get y cubed. You subtract, you plug in the 0, so you get 0 cubed. So we just end up with y cubed. And that's our second answer. Beautiful stuff. We're almost there. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the last step. So it's not hard, but you do have to think. That's the key. For y bigger than 1. So now it's going to be a little bit harder. So we're looking at big F of y, which is the distribution function, also called the cumulative distribution function. Same definition, right? We're going from negative infinity to y, and we have little f of t dt. Okay. So now we have to really think about this. Um, so we're going from negative infinity to y, where y is a number bigger than 1. So if we follow our pattern, we'll go from negative infinity to 0, and then, and then from maybe 0 to 1, and then from, from 1 to y. So, so y is some fixed number bigger than 1. So let me just go over it again. So we'll go from negative infinity to 0. We know how to deal with this integral. We know this one's going to be 0. And then, again, y is bigger than 1, so we have to get to y. So in order to get to y, we have to pass 1. So now we're going to go from 0 to 1. And we know how to handle that. Again, that's the reason we strategically pick this integral. And then we'll go from 1 to y. And you might say, well, what's y? Well, y is a number that's bigger than 1. Right? Really, really nice problem. Kind of fun. A uh, little bit type, different type of mathematics. A little bit harder than like just regular uh, calculus integrals. So the first one is going to be 0. We know that because... Uh, we know f of t is going to be 0 because um, we're integrating from negative infinity to 0. So we know it's 0 elsewhere. The only time it's 3t squared is if it's between 0 and 1. So this will just be 0, this whole thing. Right? We worked it out before uh, up here. Right? It's right here. We did it, and we know it's 0. And that's similar to this one, which we did all the work for and got 0. Here we're going from 0 to 1, so we can actually replace that with, with something meaningful. We know that that's going to be 3t squared dt from 0 to 1. And then plus, and then from, from 1 to y, we know that's going to be um, 0. So we have 0 dt. Because otherwise, if it's not between 0 and 1, it's 0. This will be equal to 0 plus. This will be 3t cubed over 3, so it'll just be t cubed. And we're going from, from 0 to 1. Plus, and we know this will end up being 0. Again, you integrate and you get c. You plug in the numbers and subtract, so it's 0. So this is equal to 1 cubed minus 0 cubed, which is equal to 1. And that's our other answer. So now we can go ahead and write down the final answer. So big F of y is equal to a piecewise function. Okay, it's a piecewise function. And let's see, the first condition was y less than 0. That's up here. 
and we got zero for that. So I'll just go ahead and put zero. And this is for y less than zero. The second one gave us y cubed. So I'll just go ahead and put uh, y cubed here. And this is for um, y between uh, 0 and 1. And the last one actually just gave us 1. And this is for y um, bigger than 1. And that, my friends, would be the final answer. That's how you find the distribution function given the density function for a continuous random variable. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.